Alternative energy has been touted as part of the solution to America's energy crisis, but do we already have that alternative buried right here in the United States? Here with us now to explain is Bob Hirsch. He is the Senior Energy Advisor at Management Information Services. And Dr. Hirsch, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. Uh, we, we've been talking a little bit about predictions for oil prices, where you think they are headed, and worst case scenario, where do you see oil prices going, let's say, over the next three to five years? Uh, the worst case is not very happy. Uh, the situation is that uh, oil prices could well be uh, many hundreds, maybe $500 a barrel within uh, something like five years. Uh, Dr. Hirsch, we're also joined this morning by Joanne Lippman. She is the editor-in-chief of Portfolio Magazine, and she's got some, some thoughts on this as well. Yeah, th this is really interesting. I think the $500 um, a barrel, actually, in, in defense of our guest here, because I'm sure you're going to have a lot of people screaming about this, but, but the fact is that $500 is probably as likely as $50. I mean, the fact is that we just don't really know where these prices are going. We, we had surveyed economists in, in, in April asking them, uh, where would the price of a barrel of oil be at the end of the summer? And we asked about a half a dozen experts, and the numbers they came up with ranged from 70 to 120. Nobody even anticipated 140. Right. So uh, you could certainly see 500 because, you know, no one can anticipate it. But the fact is, we also had a piece by uh, John Cassidy, our economics writer, talking about it could go down to 50 because you look at... Um, you know, capacity that's going to be coming online and investment that makes sense as the price of a barrel increases. Dr. Hirsch, I think those people are absolutely wrong. Uh, oil prices are simply not going to drop that much, and, and the reason is that there isn't that much oil out there. We've been on a uh, plateau of world oil production since 2004. People have been trying very hard, and they can't increase oil production from here. For somebody to suggest that all of a sudden something magic is going to happen and there's going to all of a sudden be an enormous amount of new oil, they don't understand the problem. Economists don't understand that we're limited by geology in this situation. Right. Dr. Hirsch, there's the, the big meeting this, uh, this Sunday in Saudi Arabia where OPEC will be meeting to talk about increased production. You think this is just a short-term solution even if they can find a way to pump more in, in the immediate future? I don't think it's a solution at all. I think it's good that people talk to each other. That's always better than not talking to each other. But it, the fact is that OPEC has very little spare capacity. And so if they opened all of their vows, it wouldn't make that big a difference to the world. The other thing that people don't seem to understand is that every year there are oil fields that are producing oil that are going into decline. Mm -hmm. And so to just stay even, which was what we've been doing for the last few years, mm -hmm. we have to produce between three and four million new barrels of oil each year just to stay constant. That situation gets worse and worse each year. And as, so as time goes on, we're going to eventually get to the point where oil production in the world goes into decline, and then we're in very big trouble. Well, should we face that fact and, and do other things, or should we drill offshore? What do you think, Doc? Uh, the answer is all of the above, in effect. Uh, the problem, first of all, is a liquid fuels problem. Oil is liquid fuels. There's an enormous amount of equipment out there in the world, cars, planes, boats, ships, uh, all kinds of things that represent an enormous capital cost. They use liquid fuels. So we're not going to do anything with wind power or, or something else in the near term. What we need is alternate liquid fuels as well as a big push on conservation. The oh. liquid fuels can come from coal, can come from tar sands and heavy oil, can come from uh, gas to, uh, to liquids and some other sources, things that people don't necessarily want to do from a, uh, an environmental standpoint. But the worst environmental problem, as uh, people have said, is people out of work and deepening recession. Why, why do you think coal is the, the best of those solutions? Well, we have a lot of coal in this country, and that's good. And coal can be turned into liquid fuels with technology that's uh, roughly 100 years old. It can be done. It can be done very cleanly, in fact. And what it is we need is everything that we can uh, uh, possibly do that's practical and reasonably economic. And is there is there pushback in Washington from other places? I mean, you're sitting in Washington. How much how much political pushback is there when you start talking about using coal? I think that people are still kind of all knotted up in the value system of a few years ago, and as the um, uh, the other guest indicated, <clears throat> not many people forecast this high a level of oil prices. 
Uh, but now people are beginning to pay attention in that building behind me. Uh, they're going to have to pay more and more attention because anything that they do is not going to have a short-term impact. Prices are headed upwards. They'll be volatile, so they may drop from day to day here and there, but they're headed up, and they're headed definitely into this many hundreds of dollars a barrel range. How, how, do, 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 I'm sorry. I just got to get this in because, Doctor, we're going to have Alex Sink. She's the, uh, the CFO of Florida on, and she's adamantly opposed to, uh, uh, to, to getting rid of the ban. Uh, what should I tell her? What should I ask her? Well, it's her choice, and I can understand their value system. On the other hand, when recession hits and gets deeper and deeper each year, and we have a whole lot of people, everyday folks, losing their houses and losing their jobs and losing their cars and destitute, then I think people's minds are going to change, and indeed they're going to want to do everything that uh, is practical to help to alleviate the problem, which is going to be extremely severe. How long is it going to take um, to reach this hypothetical $500 a barrel? Uh, that's very tough to, uh, uh, to forecast. The way things are going right now, I think that uh, uh, three to five years is not an unreasonable time frame.